back to a new video on this channel and on this one we need to talk about the sample editing capabilities that we get is the three options right here at the top i've recorded a deep dive about this device check the links at the description and on that one i give you uh, an overview of how of how this works but on this one i'm just gonna expand what we can do and all right so let's start with the basics i'm gonna be going to the bank number a and on that one we have this sound this is the one that you get from factory i'm gonna be using this sound so when you stand in a sample you can go to the start and the end and it will show you the whole uh, waveform and if you play it back it's gonna show you the playback pretty easy now then you have the controllers and this one the first one will control the start of the playback and then the this one the three is going to control the end of the playback and all depends you know on which mode that you're using right here if I play it now, oh, I made a mistake. If I play it now, it's gonna start from where we set the starting point and it's gonna end on whatever we set the ending point. And I guess, you know, that's, you know, this. Then you have the loop. And if the loop is disabled, I'm gonna enable it right now. The controller number two is gonna control the loop point. So if I just adjust the ending point and I play the sample back, when it, uh, gets to the loop it's just gonna keep looping that section all right so again this is just the basics of what we can do with this the value control is the zoom and you can zoom up to 11x if i go all the way up now you need to know that whenever you loop or whenever you zoom it's going to zoom around the last value that you touched for example if i go to the start and i zoom now it's gonna zoom around the starting point if i move the end now it's going to zoom around the ending point and the same thing is going to happen with this with the loop if i uh, just a loop and i touch it and i zoom is going to zoom to the loop if you have something right here even if you have a loop and you decide that you don't want it you can go to delete press it and it will ask you do you want to initialize all the points i'm going to say okay and then push to confirm and uh, everything will go back to default now then you have the remain and now the remain is blinking if you press it it's going to be steady when it's blinking it means that you can with the start push the loop and the ending point and let me just give you an example let's say that that's the ending point i'm going to loop and i'm going to be putting it right here if i move the starting point when i move it notice that it's pushing the loop and if i keep pushing it's going to push the ending point so if I do the same, but now with the remain on or steady, I cannot move or go over the loop, right? So I cannot push them. It all depends, you know, what, what you want to do. If you all, of course, you know that you don't want to go over loop or you don't want to move beyond this point, well, you enable the remain and then you get it. I'm gonna go all the way to the end and all the way to the back and i'm gonna just disable the loop if the sample is playing what you can do you can press the mark and it will set the starting point and then if you press it again it's gonna set the ending point while it's playing back another thing that you get is that the roll if you press it it's gonna just play the last part of whatever it is that you have selected cool now all this is just the basics of what you can do right here now I'm going to put the starting point around maybe, ah, maybe here. And I'm going to zoom a lot. Now when I move the starting point, the points can freely move, right? And that's fine. Now, if you, the resample is blinking, it's because you can do this. If you turn this on, now the resampling, uh, the resample is on. It means that now it's kind of a snap to the grid. And it, in this case, it's called zero crossing point. And now if I move it, it's going to move, analyze, of course, the different points and just lock you to, a, maybe, I couldn't say a grid. It's, can, it's not a grid, it's the zero crossing point. And uh, it does this so you can avoid getting uh, clicks and pops when you just you know set the starting point and the ending point of your sample i'm gonna go all the way to the start and all the way to the end there's one more thing you can do you can do shift just hold it and you need to push the value once you do so what you can do right here is with the keypad let me just adjust the camera there you go with the numbers with the pads you have all the way to one and all the way to 10. 10 is going to be zero so again what you can do right here you can set the start and the loop and the end but you can do it with the numbers so if i maybe go to start and i just keep adding maybe values and then i just go to confirm i just push to confirm right here just push it notice that it's moving 
the starting point. And all of this, you know, something that you can do when you know the exact position of the sample where you want to put it. In this case, you know, if, if you ask me, it's just much easier to use it with the controls and then to, to zoom it and see what I can do or where, where I can select it. All right, so I have three new samples on the new bank. If I truncate or modify them, I don't care because I've imported them from the SD card. Now, the main point of all of this is that when you stand on that sample, even if uh, maybe I do something on the start, I do something on the end, this is my final result. I want to keep this and not the original one. So when you go here, everything that you do, you can go and uh, uh, do truncate. And whatever it is that you do is gonna store it, you know, process it and store it on this pad. And again, this is very destructive. Once you do so, this is going to be the final version of your sample. The original one, you lose it. So it's always a good idea to, you know, have it on your SD card. And I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna truncate it. And that is it, just, just truncate it. The other options are just a little bit different. I'm gonna go here and then you have normalize. And this is super useful, especially when you sample or resample. Sometimes the volume is just not that loud. So normalize, well, we do, it will just process this, the sample and uh, adjust the uh, loudness to the max it can go. And right now, you know, this sample is already pretty loud. And this one too, but you know, just gonna go up in volume pretty much. And again, this is something that the, uh, and again, this is something that the SP404 will uh, do in terms of processing, it will process. So once you do it, you cannot go back. Then you have the other one, which is gonna be the emphasis. And on this one, maybe I'm gonna go here. Yeah, I'm gonna go here. So the emphasis, what it does is gonna add a little bit of brightness and I guess it's compressing, uh, attenuating the lows and just exciting the higher frequencies. So once you do, again, once you do it, you cannot go back. I'm gonna go to emphasis. It's gonna process it and now, what does it sound brighter? And I'm gonna do it again. You can do it many times, but if you do it super right, if you do it a lot, it's, it's gonna start kind of a breaking the actual the sound. See, it's just, <laughs> way too bright now. You know, it depends on what you have. If you have a dark sounding type of sample, you can do it. Notice how it's chopping everything. So yeah, it's super excited and compressed. So yeah, okay, so you have that option if you if you must. And remember, you cannot go back. Once you process, the uh, this is gonna be the final version. And okay, so now I want to show you how we can use the splitting and the, the marks. So I'm gonna go to the sample, which is, Again, the, the same amen break that I was using on the previous section. Now, once, you, once you're standing on that sample, you just need to go to the start and the end, but you need to do shift and then start and the end. And this takes you to pretty much the same view, but it's just a little bit different. This is where you can add marks. And notice that now you have the one, two, one, two, three, or four, maybe they're, they're dark, but the first one it's on and it's white. So right here, you can add marks or you can add chops. We're gonna talk about how the, how the, choppy, the chopping works in a minute. The controller number one is gonna move the cursor and this only moves it. When you want to add the mark, then you just stand at that point and then the, to add a mark, you just need to press mark. I'm gonna go there, just add a mark. I'm gonna keep moving the cursor. Maybe I'm gonna be adding it here and notice that the pads will you know be assigned so you can use them to audition all the different chops. I'm gonna chop one more. And now if I play this one, it's gonna be the first, the second, the third, and then the fourth. The controller two and the controller three are just super useful. Uh, with the three, you can uh, select the different marks, right? So notice right there at the bottom, it changes the marks. So I can select a mark and now the controller two can move that mark. The first one always is like the cursor. So you cannot move them after you set the mark. You just need to select it and then move it with the number two. Now, when you select a sample, if you want to delete it, you can maybe select it first with the controller three and then you just need to delete. They'll just press it and it's going to delete it. But still, if you have a lot of marks, and I'm gonna add one more, and you want to delete them by pushing the value, it's gonna give you a lot more options. We're gonna talk about them in a minute, but right here we have the delete all marks. When I press it, it's going to, you know, delete all the marks and everything goes back to the one. I'm gonna go with the cursor maybe here, I'm just gonna add a couple marks. 
uh, just like we did before. And I'm going to show you a different way of fighting marks in a second. But uh, if I select maybe the second mark, this one right here, what we can do, we can zoom. And the zoom works uh, just like, you know, with the start and the end, the other mode where we... Uh, move one of the uh, controllers the first one or the third one and this is going to zoom around that if i maybe go to the last uh chop the last mark is going to zoom around that around there and just like before you have the resample so depends on of course what you want to do uh the mm, this one again moves the marker as you can see it and then if i enable the uh resample is the zero crossing point so now and i cannot move so freely is gonna adjust it to the zero crossing point again we already talked about this a minute ago so i'm gonna delete all the marks and now we have nothing what we can do if you press this one it's gonna play the whole sample now instead of using or marking with the controllers what you can do you can do it live while it's playing just press the mark and it will just add the different marks right so now we have the different different chops cool now I'm going to go to menu, I'm going to delete all the marks again. And another way uh, to do it is by doing the same thing. And every time I play back with the one, the two, the three or the four are just going to be kind of a uh, blinking in blue. And this means that while play is playing back, you can just tap them and it's going to be, it's going to sign a chop to those pads. So just different ways of adding marks and chopping the sample. All right. Okay, so back to having no marks. Another way of doing this is by going to the menu and you have the option of auto mark. If I go there and just press it, you, well, of course, have different options and you have uh, three different ways of doing this. You have the time division, you have the level, and then you have transient. If I go to time division, now the ones at the top, well, this one just controls the modes, the, the two, it's the same thing as the value. But if I go to time division, this one selects the division. If I do 16, it will pretty much uh, do 16 chops. If I process this, I'm going to go right here and I'm going to go there and it's just going to, you know, chop it, chop it in 16 parts. And, you know, I'm going to delete all the marks. I'm going to go back to auto mark and now I'm going to be going to level. It's going to listen to the level and then create the marks. And if I go to transient, it's going to do pretty much do the same thing. And right here again, you can configure uh, the profile of if, if it's going to be hard, a uh, hard transient, and then it's going to do the chop, or maybe it's going to be mid or maybe soft. I'm going to go to mid and see what happens. I'm going to enter, do the OK, and now it's going to, you know, give you all the chops. And all depends on the sample. In this case, you know, have a lot of a lot of peaks. So it's just chopping it in 16 different parts, pretty much, just like the time division. All right, since now we know how to add markers, I want to show you how to chop. And I'm going to be using the same the same sound as before. All right, so I'm going to be selecting this. I'm going to go to Shift and Start and End. And we enter into the chopping menu. And what we need to do, you know, what we need to have is we need to have some uh, some chops if you want to chop it to different, uh, different paths. And if you press this, notice that you have the assigned to path. Uh, this is what we need to use. But first, you know, we, we need some chops. So I'm going to be going here. I'm going to be adding a mark. I'm just going to, you know, just create a couple of chops. That, that's all. And there we go. We have one, then two, then three, and then four. Now, once you push the enter, you need to go to assign to pad. And once you push it, it will, you know, give you some options right here. Now, the, the screen will let you know on which mark you're standing. And notice at the bottom, it says gate on. This is simply uh, the gate, this option. When you process and you assign all the different chops to different pads, it will be with the gate on or the gate off. So by default, it's going to be gate on. And this is something that it's going to do it after assigning the sounds or the chops to different pads. So I'm standing on the bank J and all, I had the sample on the first pad. Everything else was empty. So the other ones are just blinking. So the only thing you need to do to assign the different marks, we have four different marks. You just need to tap it, to tap the different pads, and it will just put the, uh, put the uh, chops right there. If you tap the one that it's not empty, it will delete that sample. In the case of this one, the one, it was the original sample. So if you assign the first chop to the one, it's going to, at the end, it's going to delete the original one. So again, you just need to be careful. If this is what you want to do, well, then you are gonna, you can use it. And when you tap it, it's going to turn red. In this case, I don't want to do this. I want to assign the first mark right there. And notice it turns green. 
the, the, the second mark there, the next one, and then we are pretty much on with the number four. If you want to delete the assignment, just, you know, when selecting the pad right here, you just can hold Dell or just press the Dell and it will delete the assignment. And it, it tells you right here, with this control, you can navigate to different marks, as you can see. And again, if I add it, I add the marks right here. I can go to the one and just, again, delete it if I wanted to. If I go to the four, delete it from here, or just go to the third, delete it, and then go to the fourth and delete it. And if you want to turn the gate off or on, it's going to be the controller three. All right, so you know what? Let's do it. I'm going to be going to the mark number one and start adding the marks. It's going to be one, two, three, and then four. And once you are ready to do this, you're going to go to enter and it's going to do it. And now it takes you back to sample mode. And as you can see, this one is going to be, you know, the full sample, but the other ones are going to be the chops. All right. All right, so we know how to add the marks, how to adjust the start and the end, how to process the sample. Now we need to talk about the envelopes. I'm going to be using a sound from the bank G, uh, from the one that you get from factory. And this is the sound I'm going to use. Now, what I want you, I want to do, I want to use the first part, you know, the first part of the sample. So I'm going to adjust the end and I'm going to be going right here. So every time I play it, it's going to sound like that. I notice it sounds, or maybe ends, a little bit abruptly. There you go. So what we can do, we can modify the envelopes. Uh, to access the envelopes, you need to go to Shift, and then you know you need to go to Pitch and Speed. Once you're there, you get your, your envelopes. Now right here, you cannot zoom. Uh, if you want to zoom it, of course, it's something that you need to do on your start and the end. I'm going to go back to the envelopes. And again, this works just like, you know, any envelopes that you know. You have an attack, you have a hold, which is pretty much like a sustain, and then you have the release. So if I want to add a smooth attack, and these knobs, of course, are super sensitive. If I do something like that, it's going to add a little bit of attack. Maybe I want to hold it, not that much, maybe like that, and then it's just going to end. If you want to add a little bit of release, then just add a little bit of release. And you need to fine tune this. Now it's just entering smoothly and going out smoothly. And this is super useful, especially when you, uh, again, are working with a very specific sample. And maybe you want to go to chromatic mode. Right? And if, you, if the samples are just not right, it's going to sound a little bit funny. So, yeah, this is how we do it and there's there's not a lot a lot to discuss right here you just need to select your attack your hold and then your release i guess maybe for this sample if i wanted to make it a short sample i guess that's fine maybe it's too much release and too much hold so now if i go again to shift and chromatic it sounds just a little bit better now, if you didn't like what you did right here, you can always go to shift right here, just hold it and then go to the pad number six, which is going to be in it params. If you press it, of course, I need to get out. If you press it, it's going to say current sample per parameter in it. I'm going to say, OK. And then if I go back, you know, everything is just by default. It's going to reset pretty much everything for that sample. And remember that if you again truncate, normalize or adjusted, uh, you cannot go back. All right, so coming up next is going to be this button, the pitch and the speed. And I'm going to use the same sample than before. I'm going to go to pitch and speed. And of course, you have a few options right here. Now, the first ones, the first options, uh, the default options are just pretty, pretty simple. If I move this control, this is going to adjust the speed of the uh, playback engine. And also, as a consequence, is going to modify the pitch. This is how it works. And the same thing happens when you adjust the pitch. Maybe you want to go one up or two up or maybe down. And the speed of the sample is going to change. And this is because we are using the vinyl mode, which is the default for this device. And as you could guess, right here, you get the ball volume. You can go down in volume or go up in volume. All right. And, you know, all of this is just way too simple. If I go to shift, 
you can find the, uh, the you can find the pitch by holding the shift it's just the same idea but you can find fine fine tune it if you must and of course remember it will adjust the speed and you can of course fine tune the speed and the same thing goes for the panning you can go all the way to the left and you can go all the way to the right and if you go all the way right here it's gonna be mono all right just going all the way back in this case i'm gonna go back to default it's gonna put it right there in the center i'm gonna do no fine tuning just go back to zero if you go to other samples and this depends on the modes that you're using right here in this case for this sample this one is not bpm synced so if you are using the sample or trying to change the pitch and speed speed of a sample that it's locked in to the bpm sync it's going to show you sync right here at the top so it doesn't matter what you move right here it's not going to change because it's synced to whatever bpm that you're using for you know the bank or the project but you know this is again completely up to you up to you if i go here and i turn it off we can modify the controls but again depends on your project your pattern and everything else now we, i want you to talk about the other options that you get right here i'm going to do shift hold it and notice that when you sh do shift it's going to say vinyl then vary and then yes and then on if i go to this one and i move it it's going to give me different combination combinations of uh, these options now the default one is vinyl, which is yes, and then vary is going to be off. And this is what we've been doing. When we find, it's going to change the speed, and when we change the speed, it's going to change the fine. Now if I go to the next one, it's going to say vinyl no, and then vary is going to say off. Now in this case, it's using that vary, but now if I change the speed, and I'm going to be playing this, it's going to change in semitones. And this sounds a little bit, you know, weird, because you know it's just kind of a breaking that sample because it's not using is not adjusting the speed it's just a different uh, playback uh, sample mode but you can go up and pitch without changing the, the speed uh, if you ask me it sounds a little bit better uh with on the my on the vinyl mode but you know it's again it depends on whatever it is that you're doing uh, on the sp404 now if i go to the other ones you have a couple more options it says vinyl no and then vary off but if i go here it's gonna say no and then backing and if i move again it's gonna say no and then ensemble so the backing is a uh, is more suited for drums and percussive sounds maybe short sounds plug sounds something you know th short type of sounds which is gonna be uh, it's gonna do less processing now the other one the ensemble Notice it works just like the Vari because we are standing on the Vari mode. Now the ensemble is a little bit more powerful than the backing. Uh, the, the ensemble is more suited for sustained sounds, keys, or vocals. And the uh, ensemble is just, I would say better, it's just different, but it uses uh, twice as many voices than the backing. So you need to be careful when you use this one. I'm gonna go to vinyl. I guess that one sounds pretty good to me. Uh, I'm gonna go to yes and then Vari off. Now the other options that you have right here is going to be the BPM set and by default is auto. So when you have a sample and you just import it to the pad from your SD card or from whatever, maybe the computer, is going to analyze that sample and it's going to detect the BPM. And again, this, this is something that does it by default when you import to the pad. But here you just can modify how that works. And right here you have auto and then you have manual and then manual F. I'm gonna show you what that is. I'm gonna go to auto and I'm gonna just push it. And what, right here, what you get is just uh, uh, different profiles. By default, I guess it's, it's, it's the X, uh, DSX. If I just push it, it's going to listen to the sample and g give you back the BPM of that sample. It's going to calculate the BPM. If I press it, that is just detected tempo, and then it's uh, detecting 92, 99. If I uh, go to other profiles, it's going to be a little bit different. Depends on the sample. If I go to that one, it's going to be... 115 yeah 119 so right here is something that oh made a mistake right there i'm gonna go to auto right here it depends on what you want to do or it depends on your sample you just want to use it to detect the tempo of your sample now if you don't want dsp to detect it uh, automatically uh you can go to the manual or manual f and then manual and manual f are just pretty much the same when you go to manual and you push it you can set you know the tempo manually and notice that when i move it 
is not changing this is always stuck at four stuck uh, at four and it's because you cannot change the small values but if you go to manual manual f it's going to be the the small values <laughs> there's no there's no mystery right here all right so all of this is again completely up to you and your samples and your project and usually when you import samples it's always a good idea knowing on what's the tempo of that sample but, you know if you go to auto and detect it uh, from here it's just yeah, again going it's going to do it for you and okay so that's it pretty much if you liked all of this and you learned something new please like and subscribe and this channel is supported by viewers only if you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks and keep me uh, doing videos uh, you can you have links at the description for paypal youtube thanks and patreon see you on the next one